In today's tutorial, let's do the string beach bag and let's get started right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on two patterns that are the same pattern but written differently because of where the yarn is available. Introducing the mesh market bag or the string beach bag, either way it's the same thing and what we're going to be doing in just a moment is that I'm gonna teach you about the yarn because the yarn is slightly different because it's marketed for either the US or Canada. Let me share more information about that. So in today's tutorial we're going to be working with cotton yarn and you can choose either of these two brands. They're both made by our friends at Yarnspirations.com. There is a difference between the brands and the only difference is, is the name. So what we have here in the United States, you know this brand more as Lily Sugar and Cream but in Canada you will know it as Bernat Handicrafter and you may see both of these in, on, on either side of the border and also it does distribute globally as well. So you may see either of these brands on the marketplace. So no no matter which ones you wanna go, you wanna look for this particular brand. So we're gonna tell you a little bit more about this as far as how many can you do because it's available in different format or different size balls. Let me tell you a bit about that. This version, it's asking for five balls of the Bernat Handicrafter in this format. This is the smallest format here and you can see that this is the most lightweight of the of them and then in the other size of the market bag itself, they're asking you for either two balls of the solid of this Okay, if it's variegated, you're gonna want three balls because the variegated is always less yardage in a ball because it takes more manufacturing in order to do it so they provide less yarn in order to keep the pricing the same. Or what you can do is that you can go to the larger format. You can almost get two bags out of one massive ball like this. These are 400 grams and then the Bernat Handicrafter the same thing. Almost two balls out of that. So either way you go, you can just decide where you have access to the product and of course if you go into Yarnspirations.com you have access to them all no matter where you are. So uh, without further ado, let's talk a bit about this pattern. It's very easy. Jeannie has started the trend on these and let's finish it with providing a video tutorial today. So here's what my bag looks like already in progress. I haven't finished it and what we're going to be doing is starting off in the bottom and then creating what is doing is going around and around in order to create the base. So you don't see any seam lines at all where it's being sewn because it's all being done as one unit. Once you have satisfied the pattern requirements, it's then gonna turn into the mesh. The mesh is just made up of five uh, chains and then single crochet into a the piece of the mesh and then keep on going around. The mesh is really quite quick and I haven't got this far in the tutorial yet but we're gonna work our way to the top edge and then create the strap and this is a really quite easy pattern. Now because it's cotton it's gonna be really exceptionally strong. You'll be able to see through it as well so any kind of sand as, as Jeannie pointed out to me uh, for the beach bag purposes or even if you're going to the market for dusting off some of the produce, um, it'll fall outside of the mesh and uh, meshes. So without further ado, let's start on the bottom. This pattern is exceptionally easy I think in my opinion and I think uh, you'll have a lot of fun with it at the same time. So what color am I using in today's tutorial? You were gonna ask me that in the video. I know you are. It's called the Cool Breeze Ombre. It is by the Lily Sugar and Cream line. So Cool Breeze Ombre. I really thought it was quite uh, summery and a lot of fun. So let's get started now. So today's pattern we're going to need a four and a half millimeter size crochet hook and that's also a US size a seven if you're looking for that. So let's get started. Uh, both of the bags are identical in the way the pattern is written. It's just a matter of the, the product uh, listings. So let's begin with the slip knot on the hook and uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to chain 43. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna chain 43 and then we're gonna come back around on it to create the, the absolute base and the center point of the bag. So let's just uh, chain. So one, two, three, four, five. Please go all the way to 43 for me and meet me back here and we'll get started on round number one. So here's my beginning chain. You're going to notice, wow, that's really big. You have to keep a note because I thought the same thing but once you get a uh, start crocheting on this thing, it will condense down so it's not as wide as it appears as it at, at this very moment the way that you got it done. So what I want you to do is second chain from the hook. So one and two, turn it over and get the back hump only. Okay, the back and just single crochet and I want you to single crochet all the way across this chain on the back hump and this will leave a nice uh, stitch work on the other side for you. So if once you do the first back hump, the chain uh, stays turned over. So please go all the way to the end but wait for me because I'm gonna show you what's next. There's a little bit of a twist to this pattern. So now that I'm coming all the way across my chain, I just got a, a bit three stitches left and I'm just single crocheting 
and this is kind of unusual in this part of a project. Uh, it's not unusual for bags of course and other things but it's not always done and I'm gonna go right into the very last stitch. So instead of turning and going back and single crocheting along this, what it wants to do is turn this over. So just turn it over to where you are and just come into the stitch on the other side. Okay, so right directly across because you've already gone into the end. So come into the next one and the other side and just begin to single crochet now and this is the underside of the chain of the foundation chain and you're gonna single crochet yourself all the way back along the chain but on the other side. So because I had you do a back uh, hump only this side looks perfect as far as the stitch work is concerned and you'll have a beautiful uh, finish right at the bottom of your bag. So please single crochet yourself all the way across this chain but uh, or across this uh, particular area and I will meet you back here, here because I'm gonna show you what to do now because we're not going to go back and forth in rows. We're gonna start going in circles. So I'm coming along the chain area here and or the foundation chain on the other side and I'm going into the very last stitch which is next. But wait, before you go any further, so I just finished it, you need to slip stitch to the other side of this chain. So just go to this one here and just insert and slip stitch and pull through. So now what's gonna happen is now you can go in a physical circle. So you can go down this edge and then down the other side, turn around and then come back up the other side. So that's why we're doing it. Let's move along to round number two. So let's go on to round number two. We're simply going to chain one and continuing in the same direction. So we're not turning our work to go back the other direction. We're just gonna continue to go in a circle. We start off in this first one where we've done the slip stitch two and we're just gonna single crochet ourselves all the way around. So you're gonna go all the way down this. Okay, so just follow all the way down and on the other side you're gonna turn around Okay, so just follow it and then you'll be on the other side. So you're gonna start, it's like a hat. You're gonna start creating the circles going all the way around. So please single crochet in every stitch going all the way around and when we slip stitch we're gonna meet you back up right here where we started. So we'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way around and I wanna show you before we slip stitch. So I started here and I went all the way down and then I turned around at the end just like you see here. See that? and then I came back. Just wanna make sure you understand you're going in a circle. So I want you to understand exactly where you're going to finish in this uh, on the side. So you're gonna finish right on the edge here. So you're gonna go into the very last one here and what you have to just do is then you have to then slip stitch. So this one here appears to be a stitch but it's not. Okay, so this is extending over to the first section here. So when you go to slip stitch, you're just going to slip stitch into the first single crochet. Many people add that and so what you will have is then you'll have a bag where one side looks like it's jetting out more than the other because of it. So what I want you to do, just kind of flip it so that you're working on the outside so you're gonna see that it started to bowl in. What I want you to do now, rounds three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, that's a total of six more additional rounds, do the exact same thing. So chain up one, single crochet into the first one and then go all the way around single crochet and then slip stitch. So please do that for another six rounds for rounds number three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I'll meet you back here and then we're gonna start doing the mesh work that's involved in the side of the bag. I'll see you then. So I'm back and now I'm just finishing up round number eight. So it was when I had you before, we were starting round number three and I said to do an additional three or six rounds. So I'm coming to the end and I'm joining. Okay, so here's what it looks like right now. You can see that the side edges are now defined here in the bottom of the bag, just right here and here. And you can see it's still pretty open but the mesh is gonna start closing it in as we go. So I think this is the best part of this whole project is the mesh. The mesh does not take very long and let me show you how to do that next. So in the mesh section round number one we have to start the mesh and we have to get it established before we can do the rest of the mesh. So let's begin to do that. So we're gonna chain up one and single crochet into the same one. And then we're gonna chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go back down to the line and I need you to skip the next three. So one, two, and three, go to the fourth and single crochet into that one. So that's how we're gonna do this whole round. So the next one is chaining five. One, two, three, four, five and then skip three, one, two, three, go to the fourth, single crochet in. Get it? Isn't that easy? So one, two, three, four, five, skip three, one, two, three, go to the fourth. So one, two, three, four, five, 
skip three, one, two, and three, go to the fourth. Please do that and if you don't get to the right count at the end of this round, don't worry about it. I'm gonna show you how to cheat the system. Three, four, five, skip three, one, two, three, and then go into the fourth for a single crochet. See you back here in just a moment as we go all the way around starting the mesh. So I'm coming up all the way back around and as I predicted, I think I'm off by one stitch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fake the end instead of frogging all this back out. Why bother, right? Make it or fake it. So I'm gonna skip only two and I'm gonna go into the third instead of skipping um, three. And what I'm gonna do then is then I'm gonna then finish off. So to finish off each one of the mesh uh, circles or rounds, you chain two only and then coming into the very first one here, you double crochet. So just reach over and double crochet into the first single crochet and just double crochet. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna put you in the middle of the next mesh, mesh checks. And so next time um, that you're getting into this, you're gonna chain five and then go into the center of each of the meshes. So whenever you finish, you have to reach over and do that double crochet so that you end up in the right spot. So to begin round number two in all the other rounds for the mesh, you simply just chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Middle of the mesh of the next one, single crochet. One, two, three, four, five. Middle of the mesh, next one. And you're gonna go all the way back around and exactly the same thing and I'll meet you back there as well is that you're going to do that double crochet in order to reach over to this one that you started with. You just gotta keep an eye on that. One, two, three, four, five. Middle of the next mesh, single crochet. And continue to do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I can see that this is the next, uh, next mesh section which is the row that I'm working on. As you get higher in this, this gets harder to be able to tell. Just keep an eye on it, okay? So just notice that whenever you go to go all the way around, as soon as that you see this, you know that you're at the end. What's gonna happen in this project is that this line is then gonna move to this and then it's gonna move to this and this as it gets higher and it's going to go up diagonally throughout the bag but you're not gonna see it because of the way that the pattern has been designed. So you just gotta keep an eye on that. If anywhere you're gonna screw up, that's where it's gonna be. So we're gonna continue along. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm getting the last mesh section, okay? And so now the next one is a jump from here to here which this has already started. So we're gonna chain two only, one and two and double crochet into the first one that you started with. And then that takes you back into the middle section, see? So last time your middle section was here, now it's shifted over by one. So then to continue the message, then chain five and then one, two, three, four, five and then continuing to go all the way around just like that. So what I want you to do is that I want you to grow the mesh section about 12 inches laying down. So just lay it down and get the mesh and, and the bottom section to be 12 inches long and then you're gonna come and join me back here and we're gonna do the top layers where the top layers are very similar to what you've already done here. So this is where I will leave you for now. Get that done and I'll see you back here in just a moment. When I last left you, I was working on the mesh and now here it is. Okay, so this is the mesh section. You can see you can put my hands in it, you put your fingers through it, it's fabulous and now it's measuring to what you want. If you want the bag to be bigger as far as longer, just make more mesh. And remember that anything that you change like that is going to change the yarn. What I have noticed in the past is that people don't realize, they see it laying down, it's like man, the bag's not big enough and then they make it bigger and then once they start using it, the bag then it's end up turning into something that's dragging on the ground. So just be careful with the mesh, everything does flex out once you start using this thing. So I'm at the top section here. I have finished uh, with my chain two and double crochet into the start and now I'm in the middle section ready to go for the top of the rounds that I need to do. Let's begin to review that next. So let's do the top section of the bag. Now we're going to make it look solid like it does on the bottom. So it's very, very easy round. We have to establish to make it solid again. So this is the chain five space. What we're going to do is that we're just gonna reach over Okay, so just reach over and slip stitch to the next chain five space. It'll pull it over. Okay, and then you are going to um, chain one and then three single crochets in the same space. So one, two, and three. And in the next single crochet right here, you're going to single crochet. So the repeat pattern on this whole thing is that every chain five space is only gonna be a single, three single crochets. So one, two, and three and then single crochet into the next single crochet. Let's review that one more time. So the next chain five space 
is only three. So one, two, and three and then single crochet in the next single crochet. Please do that all the way around and I'll show you how to finish this round. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I've single crocheted in the single crochet. This is where I reached over to start this side. So don't forget you still have to do this side here. I have three single crochets. Just like so. And then what I want you to do then is just slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that's over here. Okay, so just reach on over. And then we're going to begin then making this more solid. So to begin the next round, this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna begin only two rounds of doing what I'm about to show you. So we're gonna chain up one and one single crochet into each of the single crochets going all the way around. Now you'll notice that the band looks a lot thicker than only three and that's because we're gonna revisit this uh, particular area back when the strap is then uh, made for this thing. So what we're gonna do for the strap is that we're gonna attach it and make, make it and attach it as we go and then we're gonna come back and do a rounds around the strap and this bag once again uh, where it's exposed and it'll show that the band is actually much bigger. So don't uh, worry about that. So this is the first round of two that you need to do of just one single crochet in each single crochet all the way around. So please do both of those rounds now and I will see you back here and we're gonna start doing the strap work. I'll revisit uh, you before we uh, move on to the strap though and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So again two rounds of what you're doing right now of single crochet. Okay, now that I have my two additional rows done, I just wanna slip stitch to the very beginning and to the beginning single crochet. And I wanna fasten off now and so I'm just gonna take my yarn and just weave in the ends. Just use a good job of a darning needle and etc. And now we're gonna review how to do the straps. Um, for darning needle, what I would do is just exactly what you're seeing on, on here. Just put a darning needle onto your thread or to your strand and just kind of feed it underneath. You want a good job, it's near the top. And I'll keep it nice and flush. So we're gonna now start uh, doing the strap and I'm gonna give you a couple options for strap and you can decide what you wanna do. We'll follow exactly the way it says in the diagram and then we'll also just uh, kind of review what you can get away with doing as well. So now that that's done, I can actually just start now and let's begin doing the strap. I'm now about to work on the strap and what I've done is that I've folded it so that it's nice and flat at the bottom and now I'm folding it in half and just taking a, a little idea and now I can see that this is my halfway spot right here. So what I wanna do is that I wanna count out six stitches from the half. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Sticking my neat hook in, just grabbing another piece of string and I wanna mark that string with um, uh, a line here and then I'm just folding it back. Just go in the other direction. So I got, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six and then I go the other side. One, two, three, four, five and six. And now this is where I can tell that this is where there's gonna be a string, a strand. So this is where the middle point of my strap. So you can either count all the way across or you can just do the folding technique if you wish. And so now I know what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take a string now and I'm gonna mark the other side as well. So just take it more of that same color. And again, I'm just gonna come to the other side. So I'm gonna just stick it in the one side. Coming in, so it's just right directly across the street kind of idea. So the strap that we're gonna do is gonna be done and it's gonna be started on one side and then it will reach over to the other side once you get the other side of the strap done. So I'm gonna count to 12. So just make it, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and 12 right there. And that's right too. So it's just right across the street. So you want a total of 12 of these uh, stitches right in the middle and therefore you're gonna know exactly where to put it when you need to. So let's move along then and start working on the strap. So let's now start making the strap. So just laying it down, I'm just gonna fold it over and just get this, this side and just let the other side just fold toward the back and we're gonna start exactly right where it is showing with the orange and just creating a slip knot to join and I'm just going into the same one as the orange one 
and you can pull that out as soon as you do it as well. Just a note and you're gonna just pull through just to join and what you're going to work on then is that you're going to uh, chain one and you're gonna uh, single crochet into the same stitch and just hold this string down so it's on top of the line and just single crochet across to the other piece, uh, other orange one. So this is two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and twelve is the next one. Okay, so now you've just done the width. So you're gonna notice in this particular bag is that this is gonna start off thicker and then it's gonna get more narrow in the next few uh, lines. So let's review. So we're gonna turn our work and let's make the strap and I think what, what are we gonna do here is that we are going to um, just make the same thickness one more time. So we're gonna chain up one and just one single crochet into each going across. And then it says in the next row that we're gonna start getting smaller. So eventually what happens here is that we just continue to grow the strap and then as it gets long enough then we just attach it to the other side where the other orange pieces are. So coming up all the way across. So now we're gonna start getting more narrow. So let's turn our work and let's begin. So we're gonna do this, the second row here is that we are going to make the first two together. So we're just gonna not chain one, we're just gonna go into the first one right underneath, pull through and in the next one, pull through. You got three loops on the hook, pull through all three and then single crochet the rest until the final two. So one, two, I don't even know why I'm counting. <laughs> it's like crochet, I end up counting stitches that I don't need to count. I'm looking for the final two and I'm gonna put those two together. Okay, so I got two stitches left and then just these two. So pull through, go into the next one, pull through, pull through all three, just like that. Let's move up to third row. So turn our work again and third row we're gonna get um, just, um, just chain one and one single crochet into each. So one, I don't even know why I'm counting again. <laughs> so it's progressively gonna get smaller. It's just taking its time. Just like that. And once you get to the end, turn your work and let's go for round number four. The four, the first two are together again. So just into the first one, pull through, next one, pull through, pull through all three and then single crochet until the final two and put those two together. So this is how narrow it's gonna be at the end of this one. So the final two stitches are gonna get together. So round number five plus the remainder of the 18 inches after or that it will take for this stra uh, strap, chain up one and it's just one single crochet into each. Okay, so what I want you to do now that you've gotten a little bit narrower and there's only um, a total of eight stitches going across if you need to keep a count of that. And I want you to continue to go back and forth, back and forth, just one single crochet in each until this whole thing from the, uh, from this edge to the other side uh, where um, is 18 inches long. And I'll meet you back there and then we're gonna start getting there or bigger again and then we're gonna eventually hit to the other side. So off camera I've been working on the strap and now I'm ready to go. So it's about 18 inches from the top tip here to where I had started here. So let's uh, begin and we're moving up to the next row after doing 18 inches on the strap. So we're going to uh, in the first one we are going to put in two single crochets right in the very beginning. So we don't chain up one apparently just go right into it. Two single crochets in the first one and then one single crochet in all the rest of them until the last one where we'll put in two more single crochets into the same one. So now we're gonna get wider like it was how we kind of started wider before. So here's the last one. So we're gonna put two single crochets in. Let's turn our work and chain up one and we're gonna put one single crochet into each stitch going all the way across. You will find that the strap stuff goes really quickly just generally it didn't take me very long 
uh, to do all of this stuff. So I'm just single crocheting all the way across. Again it's just taking its time getting bigger which is kind of a nice gradual build up. Turn our work again and next one here is that we're gonna just go into the next one and we're, or the first one and put two single crochets in again on the end and then one single crochet and all of them until the last one where we're putting two more into that one as well. Okay last one we're gonna put in two into that one Okay, so now that we got that done, we're now going to put our bag down and we're gonna make sure that this flap does not have a twist to it. Make sure it lays completely flat down and what I want to do is that I wanna turn it in a way that I'm gonna be able to get into the bag right where I've marked it with the orange and to the one I'm currently on. So what I want to do is that I wanna go into the bag right where I've done in the orange, right where I've started and into the first stitch going right directly across from each other and pull through and through and we're gonna slip stitch our way all the way across. So we come into the next one which is part of the, the bag and then the next one in the strap and slip and slip stitch it. So it's like we're sewing it together. So in okay so we're just slip stitching So the goal is is that if you did your straps enough just like we measured that the final um, side of the strap should go right over to the other side of the orange here. So it's got a few more stitches left. Okay and I think I just got one more left. And then what I wanna do is that it's in the last one where the orange is. It's in the last one of the strap. And I wanna pull through and through. I wanna take out my darning or my uh, stitch markers and I wanna cut this string long enough that I can use it as a for a darning needle and I wanna pull this through the loop and I wanna put my darning needle in there. So the darning needle is gonna be the way to secure it in. We're not quite done this bag. We still have a little bit more crocheting to do. Just slide the needle underneath the stitch work and go back and forth three times and then it'll lock that strand into position. Making sure I can access it. like that and then I can yank on it and tug it and everything I need to do and then what I'm gonna do is that we're gonna start the next step of the bag. So we're almost done. We're just not quite there yet. So we're now gonna do the final part of the strap. I've already done one side of it just to demonstrate what it looks like and what we have to do is that we have to single crochet ourselves all the way around the strap and follow it all the way back and then back up to the one side of the strap. So you're gonna do all one side like this. So the other side you have to do the same. I have to tell you something though. You gotta watch out for this because it's not something I thought about until after I, I was in process. So because you've gone all the way around the bag on the outside, if you go in a different direction than what is, you have to make sure that you have to go in the same direction along this top piece or what's gonna happen if you're going in the opposite direction you're gonna look like that you're looking at the wrong side on the final area. So this has to go in the same direction. So when I go to start this side here, I have to make sure wherever I start I'm gonna have to come across this way because if I go the other way it'll be on the other side and therefore the stitches on the top will appear backwards. So let me join on my yarn. I joined it about the halfway point of the top here and I'm just gonna go along the top of the band 
and it's a matter of the side. So let's just go straight across where I was. So you just go into the side. Now because you did single crochet, every line of single crochet equals a single crochet in the horizontal. So just join it, chain one and single crochet into the same one. And what we're going to do, leave the straggler down on top of it and just move along and just equally space single crochets going all the way around on the strap. So as you go all the way around eventually you're going to hit to the main bag area. Just continue to go so you don't have to add any extra stitches or take away stitches when you hit that area. And you're just single crocheting all yourself all the way around. So this is gonna provide extra stability for the stretching of using this bag by doing this. So you can just see I'm just easy, easy peasy. It's like working with a hat brim and you're making the, the rest of the hat based on the brim. It's no different. So it provides a really nice finish uh, when you're going to do this bag on this particular round. Again I think A I think it's partly aesthetic but I think it's actually um, partly functional as well for giving extra strength. So I'm coming close I can feel it under my hand that I'm getting close to the bottom of the bag area. I just want to demonstrate that before I let you go and do the rest. So I'm running out of strap here in the bottom. Just wanna take my time and not rush my process of skipping any stitches as I go down. Okay, so I'm about to hit the bottom of the bag here where the mesh is. So I'm just continuing to come down the strap all the way until there's nothing left and then I just jump over to the bottom of the bag. So right in the corner where this other one is joined and just start single crocheting across. So as I crochet along across I will run back into this band again and I will crochet up the side of it and then I will eventually hit it at the top and then what I want you to do just hit it at the top just join it with a slip stitch and then just weave in your ends and this bag is good to go. So I'm gonna expect you to do that when I come back I'll have this completely done. So here I am all done and I can see why Jeannie made five of these. These are really quite easy to make. They're quite quick and you got a bit of mesh. You got a great strap going on. It's really quite an easy design. There's not a lot of thinking power to it. So um, you know it's nice to have one of those projects in your library of your mind to be able to um, to do without having to do a lot of counting and etc. So this is how you do this market uh, mesh bag or mesh market bag or the string beach bag and this is exactly how you would do it. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. Have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.